Hello guys, welcome to the Physics C lesson. In today's Physics C lesson, we are going to continue from where we ended. And uh, in today's lesson, we will look at thermocouple thermometer. Okay? So look at thermocouple thermometer. Okay? So remember in our previous lessons, we looked at the different types of thermometers where we looked at the, the clinical thermometer and also the laboratory thermometer. So today, I want us to look at thermocouple thermometer okay so without further ado let's look at what a thermocouple thermometer is so guys you should know that a thermocouple thermometer is a thermometer made from two different types of metals joined together to form two junctions okay yeah so you have heard it it is just a thermometer made from two different types of metals joined together to form a junction okay so the diagram below shows the structure of a thermocouple thermometer now here is a diagram which shows you the structure of a thermocouple thermometer okay this is it okay so this is the, a thermocouple thermometer here consisting of one different metal or wire made of a different metal which is copper in this case joined to a voltmeter okay so this is still copper wire here and then here there's another metal which is joined to copper wire which is the ion metal making ion wire so these two here are called the junctions okay so basically this is what a thermo uh, a, a thermo uh, a thermocouple thermometer looks like okay now let's look at um operation of thermocouple thermometer how the thermocouple thermometer works how it measures the temperature or how yeah how it operates how it is used to measure temperature Yo, yeah so basically that's what we are looking at so what you should understand guys is that um, a thermocouple thermometer works on the principle that when it two junctions of the two metals joined together are kept at different temperatures a current is produced in the metals okay so you have heard it it works on a principle that when it two junctions of the two metals joined together are kept at different temperatures a current is produced in the metals that is it so these two junctions as long as they are placed at different temperatures then there will be current that will be produced in those metals or wires okay so we are saying the size of the current is directly proportional to the current or temperature difference okay so the size of the current that is produced in those wires or metals is actually directly proportional to the temperature what it means here is that maybe if you record more current then that means that the temperature difference between the two junctions is actually big okay so yeah that is it okay like uh, let me show you like here so this is what i'm talking about so this is it so this is a, a thermocouple thermometer here being used to measure temperature so one part of a junction is placed in ice okay then the other part of the junction is placed in sample water so let's say you want to measure this temperature of the water so one part of it of this thermocouple thermometer must be put in a non temperature like ice we know ice melts at um 100 no zero degrees is celsius okay so then when you put it there then the other end you put in i mean the other junction you put it in a solution or substance that you want to measure its temperature or whose temperature you want to measure okay so that's how it works so a current then is generated here which is read by the voltmeter okay in fact the voltmeter here can read now the voltage okay because there will be current also voltage difference will also be indicated here and then that voltage difference or potential difference is going to be used or converted to temperature 
and you will be able to tell actually a machine itself or a device itself can change automatically from voltage to temperature it's not you that will be required to do the changing so that's how basically a thermocouple thermometer works so here let's continue so we are saying to measure the temperature of an unknown substance one junction is kept at a constant temperature i.e i c point okay then what happens while the other junction is kept at the uh, the other junction is kept at the, uh, the other junction is kept at the point where the temperature is to be measured yeah so if you want to use a thermocouple thermometer to measure temperature we are saying to measure the temperature of an unknown substance one junction is kept at a constant temperature i.e ice point while the other junction is kept at the point where the temperature is to be measured yeah just as i showed you that um uh, this other one is kept at the ice point then the other one is placed at uh, the liquid or substance whose temperature is to be measured okay yeah then we are saying the potential difference between the hot and the cold junction is then measured so now the potential difference or voltage difference between the hot and then the cold is measured okay so there will be a potential difference between the cold and the hot or the other substance being measured okay then the potential difference is then converted to a temperature reading the greater the temperature of the of the hot junction the greater the potential difference okay so basically that's what the potential um how the thermocouple works okay so let's now look at um advantages of a thermocouple thermometer okay so we are looking at now advantages of a thermocouple thermometer so number one i can say it can withstand high temperature with suitable metals so meaning it can be used to measure very high temperature with suitable metals if you are using sweet, uh, suitable metals or metals that have high melting and boiling point then you can actually come up with a thermocouple that is capable of measuring high temperature okay then number two it has large temperature range hence it can measure very low or very high temperatures okay so it has high or large temperature range meaning that um, it has a lot of range like maybe from zero to thousand of degrees celsius okay so because of that it can be used to measure very low or very high temperatures okay then number three junctions used are sharp and pointed and therefore can be used to measure diff uh, temperature accurately at a point yeah so the point being said here is that uh, because junctions used are sharp and pointed therefore thermocouple thermometer can be used to measure temperature accurately at a point maybe within short points you are able to measure temperature okay that's one advantage again or another advantage then in form it has a rapid response to temperature change so it has a rapid response to temperature change so whenever temperature changes it is able also to read that temperature has changed so in other words it is a very responsive okay yeah so these are the advantages of using a thermocouple thermometer compared to other thermometers that we have talked about the liquid in glass thermometers such as the laboratory thermometer and then the clinical thermometer okay now let's look at the conversions between kelvin and degree celsius so when i talked about the absolute temperature i did not actually 
uh, give an example on how you can you can convert from Kelvin to degrees Celsius. So in today's lesson, I want also to show you how you can convert from Kelvin to degrees Celsius. So you must remember in the previous lesson uh, the formula that I derived. Okay, so I'm saying the following formula is used to convert between degrees Celsius and uh, Kelvin. So this is the formula I drove in the other lesson where I said T, which is temperature C, meaning degrees. So temperature in degrees Celsius is given by temperature in Kelvin minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, okay? Or temperature in Kelvin is given by temperature in degrees Celsius plus uh, 273.15 Kelvin. That means if you are given temperature in uh, in Kelvin, then they want you to convert it into Celsius. Use this formula. If they have given you temperature in Celsius, then they want you to convert it in Kelvin, then use this formula here. So this is an example where we have this question which says find the following temperatures in Celsius and Kelvin M. They are saying you have 27 degrees Celsius and the B, you have 280 degrees Celsius. Okay, so very simple here. So solutions, we will say M. So we, we are just going to uh, look at A. We have 27 degrees Celsius, which we want to take to Kelvin. Okay, so we will bring down this formula because this is the one that will take us, I mean this one, to Kelvin. Since we are in degrees Celsius here, then they want us to take it to Kelvin. So we'll bring this formula here. That's the procedure. Then after that, if you want, you can put it data or you can go direct where you say, okay, temperature in Kelvin is equal to, this is temperature in degrees Celsius, which is what you are given, 27, then plus, then this is 273.15, once you add this one, you'll get temperature in Kelvin is equal to 301.5 Kelvin. Then B, we have been given 280 Kelvin. Then they want us then to change it to Celsius, okay? So meaning we we'll use this formula here where we are saying temperature in um, in degree Celsius is equal to temperature in Kelvin minus 273.5. Uh, one five degrees Celsius. Okay, so these differences must be noted. Okay, if you can't, then you must know how I had to drive these equations here. So then we'll say temperature in Kelvin is equal to, then we'll get, get this Kelvin provided here, then minus 273.15. Then we'll have temperature in degrees, I mean, is equal to uh, 6.85 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is how you convert, guys. Now, we move on and look at the other subtopic key, which is the behavior of gases or gas behavior. So, we are looking at behavior of gases. This is a very good topic. Though to some people, it's quite complicated, but no, it's not quite complicated it is straightforward maybe the materials that how you have been exposed to do not explain these things properly so you are going to see as we are going to to, to tackle this uh, uh, part of the lesson uh, that uh, this actually is very easy so let's go so here we are saying the behavior of gases is that they all possess the following properties so gases possess the following properties guys number one have temperature they have temperature these gases then two occupy volume then four possesses pressure okay these gases also possesses pressure okay then there's one property that i didn't include here which is kinetic energy okay but because that kinetic energy is not included in your syllabus at this level Hence, I omitted it, okay? But these are some of the properties of four. Gases have temperature, occupy volume, possess pressure, okay? So, what you should know, guys, is that um, 
these properties are related these properties are related to each other which means when one of them is changed it affects one or two of the other properties yeah so if you have a gas then you happen to change one of these properties then it can either change this one or this one that's what happens okay so what i'm trying to say here is uh, that um, these properties of gases here temperature volume pressure they are related to each other so which means that if one of them is changed then it affects one or two of the other properties so what i was saying here is that um, if we, let's say you have um, a certain amount of gas gas let's say in a bicycle tube then let's say that bicycle tube is expanded then the pressure there is going to be decreased okay the pressure is going to be decreased if you increase the volume of the tire by maybe adding some more materials there then you expect that the pressure of the gases is going to decrease okay so pressure guys here is just it's just it's just defined as a force acting normally per unity area okay that is just what it, pressure is so in other words when a force is applied on an object or a substance then pressure is created upon that area where force is applied okay so now i am saying this part of the topic appears to be difficult because of the materials that you come across so i am making sure that i explain so that you understand these things okay so what i'm saying here is that um, these properties are related which means that which means when one of them is changed it affects one or two of the other properties okay so now we are saying the three famous scientists to have studied the behavior of gases were robert boyley jacques charles and joseph louis gay luzek so these scientists have mentioned here studied these properties of gases okay uh, each of the scientists developed a law which explains the behavior of the gas when one of the properties is changed okay so these scientists here robert boyley jacques charles and joseph louis gay luzek developed a law which explains the behavior of the gas when one of the properties is changed so these are the laws that you hear people talk about gas laws gas laws so let me push this one up here okay so the first law here is that uh, robert boyle developed boyce law okay this scientist here Bo robert boyle developed um boyce law then this one here jackass charles developed charles law then in this one joseph louis gay lozek developed gay lozek's law so we have now boy's law charles law gay, gay lozek's law then now we have what is known as combined gassy law okay so now boy's law let's look at the boy's law today so guys you should understand that boyley noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is halved the pressure is doubled and if the volume is doubled the pressure is halved okay so this is what boy's law or boy 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 this scientist boy noted boy noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is halved okay you get a container like 
a very good example I can give that can make you understand this is a bicycle pump. So you have a bicycle pump which is used actually to put pressure or air into a tube. So what I'm saying is uh, let's say you close the you close the outlet of the bicycle pump then you start pushing the handle inside you as you push the handle inside you are reducing the volume inside but what happens to the pressure pressure starts increasing increasing okay so it starts be feeling hard because pressure starts increasing okay so pressure starts increasing all right so that's what actually happens so i will demonstrate shortly using a simple diagram that i've given so boy boy noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas when they say fixed mass it's like okay i will explain later these things that's why they are hard to sum because of certain terms like these, which I'm going to explain. Boy, Boyle noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is halved, the pressure is doubled. And if the volume is doubled, the pressure is halved. So let me just push this one up here and bring the diagram. So here is the diagram that I'm going to use. So this is a diagram. This is called a piston. This is called a cylinder. Then inside, we assume there are gas particles here. Now, since it is closed, gas particles cannot go in and some gas particles cannot come out. Then that means that we, the mass of the gas inside there is fixed. Hence, why we use this term here okay this is why we say boyle noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is halved the pressure is doubled okay meaning if let's say the volume here is five cubic um meters okay this is the volume okay we are saying volume let's say here is five cubic meters and then pressure inside there is four newton per square meter so inside the pressure four newton per square meter that these are some of the units of pressure also pascal now we are saying if we have the volume pressure will double i.e. if volume is halved to 2.5 cubic meters pressure will double to 8 meter i mean 8 newton per meter okay there was um some edit which i couldn't finish so this per meter that's what he meant that's what this says boy boy noted that if the volume of the fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is halved the pressure is doubled and if the volume is doubled the pressure is halved so what we mean in the first instance here let's say this volume is five cubic meters the total volume then let's say we try to half it by pushing this there up to somewhere there we have it so that it is 2.5 cubic meters then according to boiler since we have halved then pressure must double from 4 to 8 newton per meter square or per square meter that's how it is going to be that's what he said so when you decrease volume you are increasing pressure because particles they are becoming closer to each other right so they are creating more pressure right 
Then he said, and if volume is doubled, the pressure is halved. So let's say you get it back and you increase even more volume. Then pressure will decrease by the same ratio. Okay. So now we are saying he concluded that there is or there was an inverse relationship between volume and pressure. This re relationship is called Boyle's law. Okay, so you have heard. So Boyle now concluded to say, no, there is a relationship between volume and pressure, and that relationship is an inverse relationship. An inverse re uh, relationship is one where if one quantity increases, the other quantity decreases. That's an inverse relationship. Okay, let me give you a real life example if two boys can spend um seven days to cultivate one orima ah, okay let me say eight days two boys can spend eight days to cultivate a rima now let's say i add two more boys so that we have four how many days can they spend to cultivate a rima four days okay so as I increase the, uh, increase the number of boys, the number of days they spend in cultivating a lima decreases. Okay? So meaning such kind of relationship is inverse. When you increase the number of boys, the hours or the days they spend cultivating a lima decreases. This is the same situation with the boys law here. Okay? When uh, volume is increased, then pressure is decreased. When volume is decreased, pressure is increased. So such kind of a relationship is called inverse relationship. Now, the relationship between pressure and volume was called Boyce's law. Okay? So now, Boyce's law states that the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to pressure that is all so the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to pressure when we say constant temperature like i was showing in the previous diagram you are just pushing the piston you are not removing heat from the gas or adding heat to the gas you have just kept it as it is you are just changing simply the volume then you, can, you see that the pressure there increases. Okay, that's what we mean when we say the volume of a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature is inversely proportional to pressure. So we are saying the law can be expressed mathematically as shown, where we say V is directly proportional to 1 over P. So volume is directly proportion. Ah, sorry, volume is inversely proportion to one over pressure, which we can say. Or oh, this one can be now written as a volume is equal to. Um. Uh, when we put equal here, then here we put k, which is constant of proportionality over pressure. So or. Oh, we can say pressure, if we multiply this times this, we'll get pressure times volume, then equals uh, constant here, which is constant of proportionality. And I've explained it to say where k, excuse me, k, this one, is the constant of proportionality. V, this one, is volume and P is the pressure. Okay. So this is Boyce's law. In form of an equation okay now if pressure is plotted against volume the following graph is obtained so if we get pressure and volume we plot them this graph is obtained here pressure here volume so we obtain this graph like that Pressure, volume, we obtain this graph like that. 
this graph guys put it in your mind because it comes in an exam and amount per choice so now let's do like this we demonstrate the authenticity of this graph using the following simple experiment so this graph here this graph here can be proved using some simple experiment so this is what i'm saying we demonstrate the authenticity of this graph using the following simple experiment so let's say we have the same piston and cylinder here so we are saying let's say the volume of the cylinder is 12 cubic meters the volume here and the pressure inside it is 2 newton per square meter okay that's the pressure inside there then we are saying according to boy's law if we have the volume of the cylinder to 60 cubic meters since it is 12 we have it to 6 he's saying the pressure will double to 4 newton square meter 4 newton per square meter because it is 2 so it will jump to 4 that's what we saw in the in the in the law of in the law of boy's law and if again we have the volume to three okay from six we have it to three as cubic meters the pressure will again double to eight newton per square meter so again it will move from four it will go to eight if we further have the volume 1.5 cubic meters the pressure will again double to 16 so it will move from 8 to 16 newton per square meter now let's say we record this information in the table below and plot it on the graph as shown below so let's say this information we record it okay so this is what i'm trying to demonstrate this is let's say we had the 12 we reduce it half to 6 so it will be now here at 12 here we're saying 12 as the volume then pressure as the at 2 here then if we reduce it to half then we said the the pressure will double to 4 if again we reduce from 6 further we have it to somewhere um, three then we say it will double to eight if we further again reduce to somewhere 1.5 pressure will double to 16 so we are saying this information let's push it in a table so this is the table where when we have the volume of 12 the pressure is two when we have it to six the pressure is four when we further have it to three the pressure is eight when again we further half it to 1.5 the pressure is 16 so this information here i've put it in the table so we can plot this information on the graph to see if we can come up with the first graph that i gave you the shape of the graph that i gave you so let's push this one there and let's bring the graph here so this is our standard graph so we will plot pressure versus the volume so meaning on the vertical axis we have pressure in newton per square meter then on the horizontal axis we have volume in cubic meters then we can put our range of values so pressure is from 2 to 16 so we can actually say here we have 0 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 all right then the volume is from 1.5 to 12 so we can equally here say 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 all right i did not put 16 here right okay i didn't then we can start plotting here like 12 comma 2 so here 12 on the volume part we are at 12 then comma 2 on the pressure part is here 
So 12,2 is somewhere here. You put a point. Then 6,4. So 6,4 somewhere here. So 6 pressure. I mean volume. So we have moved from here. Now we are here. Then we plot it with 4 on the pressure. So 6, 4, we go up to here. So it's here we put a point. Then 3, 8. So 3, if this is 2, then 3 is on the middle. So 8 is somewhere here. Then um, 1.5,16. So if this is 2, 1 is somewhere here. Then 1.5 somewhere on the middle here. So, comma 16, it will be somewhere there. Then let's put now, draw a smooth curve here using a free hand. So, it will come out like that. So, you see, this and the one I gave you, they are the same, the same guys. Okay. So, now, now let's again investigate further about Boyce's law. So, Boyce's law is, we said PV is equal to K. Or K is equal to PV is the same. Now let's say we pick two points. Let's say we pick this point point one and this point point two. And then we want to find the value of K at point one and point two. Okay. So at point one, here the volume is somewhere here, which is um uh three. The volume is three. On the middle here when we come here the volume will be three then the pressure will be what eight so if we are to measure k k1 the k which is the constant of proportionality at point one we will call it k1 must be given by p1 pressure one which will be here and volume one Okay, then which will be now we can get pressure which is 8, then times, then a volume here which is 3. Okay, because it is on the middle. So when we follow here, it will be 3. Then equals if we multiply 8 times 3, it will be 24. Then here also, let's try to find pressure here. I mean, constant k here so the a constant of proportionality here will be called k2 at the point 2 is going to be given by pressure here which will be p2 because we are dealing with point 2 times v2 so we'll say again equals pressure it is a 4 here times then we'll come to volume it will be 6 so we'll say equals 4 times 6, it will be 24. So, this shows that K1 is equal to K2. Yeah, what we found at here, K1 was 24, and K2 is also 24. So, meaning K1 is equal to K2. So, which means that if K1 is equal to K2, since K1 is PV, P1, V1, then K2 is P2, V2, then we can substitute here K1, we put this, and K2, we put this, so that we have, where we have K1, we put this here, it will be P1, V1, then we put equals, where there's K2, K2 is also this one, we put P2, V2. Now, this formula, guys, becomes the law also boy's law this formula guys becomes boy's law let me even push it in there so this one becomes boy's law so this equation is used to calculate questions on boy's law okay so this equation is used to calculate questions on boy's law so for example if the volume of the gas is changed from one point to another Pressure or volume at the second point can be calculated provided um, three of the quantities are known. So what I mean here is this. Uh, usually in exam, 
exactly same the same example I was giving. If this is my piston, and then this is my cylinder. So let's say we have volume from here, let's say four meter cubed from here to there. And let's say pressure here is what is six is six Pascal. It is also 6 Newton per square meter, also the same. Now, if we push this one so that it comes here, okay, we can also be able to calculate either volume now or pressure, which will be here. It's possible to do that. That's what this equation is there for. Like, we can actually classify as P V P1 V1 as the pressure and volume before this one was pushed while P2 and V2 is the pressure and volume after you push it. That's why here we have said for example or we have said this equation is used to calculate equations on Boyce's law. Then we have said for example if the volume of the gas is changed from one point to another. So the volume of the gas is changed from one point to another. Pressure of volume at the second point here, at this second point, pressure of volume at this second point can be calculated provided three of the quantities are known. Three. At least we know one, two, three. Then the other one can be also now known. So now let's look at some examples. Okay. So example, so we are saying a sample of gas has 1,000 cubic centimeters and pressure 8 times 10 to the power 3 pascal. Assuming temperature remains constant, calculate 1, the pressure of the gas when its volume is doubled, then B. Uh, the volume of the gas when its pressure is 1 times 10 to the power 5. Okay, we left Pascal here. So let me push this one up here and bring you to the situation. We are being told that a sample of gas has volume of 1,000 cubic centimeters and pressure 8 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. Assuming temperature remains constant. So when you hear temperature remains constant. We are really talking about Boyce's law. Then they say calculate the pressure of the gas when its volume is doubled. Now here they're saying the volume has been doubled. So when they double volume, what happens to pressure? Pressure is halved. Okay? When you, increase, when you double volume, it will go to 2000. Then this one must reduce to 4 times 10 to the power 3. That's what we expect. So they are saying calculate the pressure of the gas when its volume is doubled. So solution, we we'll use the formula. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2 data. We we'll say P1 is equal to 8 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. So this is the pressure 1 before change has happened. So when they say pressure of the gas, calculate pressure of the gas when its volume is doubled. When they say its volume is doubled, meaning they have changed. So P1 and V1 is when it were before they did anything to the volume. So here pressure is 8 times 10 to the power 3. Volume 1 is 1000 cubic centimeters. So forgive me again, I'm supposed to have a 3 here. Then V2 now, here, it is this one here. Calculate the pressure of the gas when its volume is doubled. So V2 here, they change the volume to four to 2,000 now because they doubled it. Then they're saying we calculate pressure 
when volume has gone to 2. So we'll say pressure we don't know it. Okay? So we'll substitute now this information into the formula. P, it's this one. 10, I mean 8 times 10 to power 3 Pascal. Then times here between P and V, there's times. V1, which is 1,000 cubic centimeters. 1,000 cubic centimeters. Then we'll say equals here. Then P2, we don't know, is this one times. Then V2 is this one, 2,000 cubic centimeters. So we multiply this times that, we'll get 8 times 10 to the power 6 pascal, this pascal here, and this centimeter here. Okay? If you want, the answer here can still be 8 million as well. Then equals P2 times 2,000 cubic centimeters. You are going to have 2,000 cubic centimeters P2. Now let's push this one up here. So in order to know P, or we'll divide here by 2,000, equally here by 2,000. Because between 2,000 and P, there's multiplication. So we can get rid of this 2,000 because we want P2. Then this and that will cancel. So the whole of this and that will cancel. Then this and that will cancel. So if you say uh, 8 times 10 to the power 6 divided by 2,000, you have you remain with 4,000 Pascal. Then equals, this will cancel. 2,000 and 2,000 will cancel. You remain with P2. This means P2 is equal to uh, 4 times 10 to the power 3. So this one is the same as 4 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal. Okay, so now what has happened is when we doubled the volume, pressure also halved from 8 times 10 to the power 3 to 4 times 10 to the power 3. Then let's look at the B here. So solutions. So B, the formula remains the same. They're saying here now we calculate the volume of the gas when its pressure is 1 times 10 to the power 5. If this is the pressure, they want us the volume. So this remains volume 1, pressure 1. Now they've given us pressure 2, they want us the volume 2. So data will say, pressure 1 is still the same, this one. Volume 1 is still the same, that one. Now they've given us the pressure 2, which is this one. Now they're asking us to calculate the volume, so the volume to this one. Question mark. Then we'll substitute P, it is this one, then it times, then V1, it's this one, then equals, then this one, it's this one, we'll put it times, then V is this one, we don't know it. Then... From there, when we multiply these two, we'll get this, okay? So this times this number, you get this. Then this Pascal times this, you get this. Then equals, then this times this, you get 1 times 10 to the power 3 Pascal V2. Then let me push this one up. Then we want to remain with V2. To not this one, so we we'll divide by that. Also, this side by the same we have used here, so that now we can even say, uh, no, 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 not this one. Now that the O of this one can cancel with this one, then this can cancel with that. Then you divide. 8 times 10 to the power 6 divided by 1 times 10 to the power uh, 5. What you are going to get here is 8, then you put centimeter cubed, or cube, uh, 8 cubed centimeter, then here you remain with V2, which means V2 is equal to 
80 cubic centimeters. So this is your volume now, which you have calculated. Okay. So now here is your exercise. So here is your exercise where we have said a gas occupies a volume of 10 cubic centimeters at 1000 kilo pascal. Kilo is just 10, 100, I mean 100 times 10 to the power 3. So this here, 100 k pascal is the same as 100 times 10 to the power 3 pascal. So don't be confused. So this one I've explained is the same as this one. Now, so if the pressure is increased to that, what is the volume of, what is the, what is the new volume if the temperature remains the same at 27 degrees or so? The already said the temperature will remain the same, so don't mind this number. So guys, as for now, bye and see you in the next lesson.